Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to church on this second Sunday of Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well done. I don't have many announcements for myself, but I would like to invite Jim, George, and Matt to come on up. Whoever gets first gets to make the first announcement. <laughs> up there, using the microphone in front of your mouth. Yepers. Actually, Jim, you should probably let both of them go first. There's a shorter. You're up. I just wanted to take a minute and thank everybody that came out for our cleanup yesterday. We had an awesome turnout. We had 16 people here yesterday morning at 8 o'clock. So thank every one of you that came. And if you have an opportunity, we could use some help Tuesday night with the mulching starting at 5.30. Thank you. Go ahead, Matt. Was that my water? Yeah. It's okay. I'm used to water in my showers. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it all came out. No worries. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be here at Christ Lutheran Church, and I want to also say uh, hello to all of you who can't be here and are streaming uh, this morning. So. Uh, what are my goals as your council president, uh, as you know, is to give you a short monthly report on the council's work and on other things you may not hear about but should know on the first Sunday of each month. My goal here is to be as brief as I can, so here we go. The internal financial review of the BSA troop has been completed. You recall we mentioned that uh, a month or so ago. Uh, their record keeping procedures and safeguards were excellent. Uh, we are awaiting more records from the Cub Scouts and will conduct their review in the coming weeks. The internal review of our church finances uh, is currently underway as well. Bev Seabreeze and Linda Hens are examining the disbursement uh, side of things and Tom Bream will be reviewing uh, the receipt side. I'm also pleased to report that as of the end of February, our income and expenses uh, here at Christ Lutheran are in line with the budget that we all approved at the congregational meeting. It's a great way to begin our church year in 2024. I want to thank you for your faithful giving and your personal support of the ministries of our church. Giving by texting is here. Uh, Keith has our church set up with Vanco. Uh, so now you can give from anywhere, from the pews, your home, hotel, wherever it is you are. <clears throat> your options will be exactly the same as if you're using an envelope or giving on your computer. Uh, I plan on actually doing it uh, myself, and I'll give you some maybe some personal experience and some tips on how that, how that works next month. Uh, previously, I'd mentioned the upgrades to our streaming service uh, for watching services while on vacation, sick at home, or anytime you can't be here on a Sunday morning. I have received several very positive comments about how well it's working. Uh, I want to thank Keith for spearheading a successful and necessary upgrade to our streaming. Uh, and uh, it's used, of course, by our members and by people who are just checking out CLC without actually showing up. The women's group is pulling together under Amy Billet's leadership and will be kicking off next Sunday, April 14th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's next Sunday, the 14th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, women of all ages are invited to come and help start a women's ministry at our church. I'm very pleased at uh, how Amy's doing with this. Parsonage repairs, uh, our parsonage is in the process of having significant plumbing work done. It's just, it's just not new in its time. Uh, <clears throat> the majority of the basement concerns have been addressed. One more piping issue for the future. The upstairs bathroom still needs to have drains completed and uh, we'll move forward with uh, uh, tile as soon as we, uh, as that, that is all completed. If you need more information on the partridge, uh, on, yeah, parsonage, I can tell you that uh, Pastor Patty can fill, fill you in uh, uh, all kinds of details. I want to thank George and the property team. You may or may not know, but our rear sliding door works. And, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> I'm going to repeat myself here because I want to. Uh, I sincerely want to thank each of you for your consistency, help, and assistance, and your desire to help and lift our congregation. Whether it's teaching, organizing, cleaning, and just working behind the scenes, councils uh, send you a sincere thank you for your effort, thoughts, 
and work are truly appreciated. It's one of those things that makes CLC so special. Uh, I am well aware that this is a church and it's not all about the numbers. However, I do want to share with you that your generosity is noticed and appreciated. A growing church is a healthy church and you are an important part of that. Council says thank you for your efforts, your prayers, and your giving. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. We took a shower for the first time this weekend without any water alarms going off. Isn't that exciting? I know. It was awesome. Go ahead, Matt. Good morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Matt Meyer. I'm the uh, coach of the softball team. Uh, just a quick reminder, softball starting our first game will be the last week of April, and we're going to have our first practice next Sunday, April 14th at 1130. It's not too late to sign up. There's a sign-up sheet out here in the hallway, or you can just pull me aside and tell me you're interested. Uh, so we're excited to uh, have our third season of softball, and I hope everyone's excited as well. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. I do have just one more announcement, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to ask Jordan to come. Jordan, will you come up front with me, please? We're going to make this official. While Jordan's coming up, um, just to let you know, Bill T Toms is home from the hospital. Um, he's waiting on some more test results, but um, they're, at least he's home and getting some rest where he can be comfortable. Um, Jordan, this will be short and sweet. Your, your brother's going to be very jealous because you only have to be up here for like a minute or two. Jordan went through the new membership class, and come on over here, here with me, my friend. You're perfect. And Jordan um, was on a scout camp out when we did membership. She's one of our BSA, part of the girls' troop. So she went through the membership class to officially join as an adult member of our congregation. So Jordan, you can look right at me. You don't have to stare at them. It's okay. I just want to ask you if you have made this choice on your own, if you're choosing to be an adult member of this congregation, and if you plan to uphold our mission and our values. Yes? Would you like to welcome Miss Jordan Bell? Yeah! You can go back. See how easy that was? All right, you may now stand for our opening hymn.
gather this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We'll pause for a moment of self-reflection and confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. O Lord of resurrection surprises, open our hearts this day to the presence of Jesus Christ. 
erase our excuses for unbelief and exchange them for strong witness to the power of your mercy and love. Give us courage and challenge us to walk the path of discipleship, knowing that Jesus goes before us, leading and guiding our steps. In his name we pray, amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from Acts chapter four. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the, the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with the great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Please stand if you're able. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were, were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so am I sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated and I would invite any children or youth to come up for the general or come up for the children's message. Also at this time if you want don't forget to fill out your generosity moment so we know you were here. Oh, that's really cool. All right, well good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing well? Okay. So, I've got a question for you. Okay? We're going to talk about trusting and whether we believe people or not today. Are you ready? If I told you that I climbed, climbed Mount Everest, would you believe me? Oh, wow, they're, they're, somebody's mocking me from the congregation, too. That's not right. It was, I know. If you don't know Keith, you get, you, oh, he's up there. Thank you. Well, you're right. I did not climb Mount Everest. If I told you I brushed my teeth this morning, would you believe me? Really? How can you tell? Well, this is true. This is true. So I have another question. If I told you that there is a rainbow in this church, hmm, would you believe me? Okay, now wait a minute. They just told me there's no rainbow, but you told me there is. You wanna go show me, you wanna go get a rainbow for me? Cause I bet I'm right. Hey Dylan, where's the rainbow? Well, can you bring it here? Oh, looky here. There was a rainbow in the church today. 
You doubted me, didn't you? Didn't you? You did. Hmm. You have no words. Okay, that's okay. Well, I'm going to put our rainbow right here so y'all can see it. Today in our lesson that I just read to you, we heard about Jesus' one disciple. His name was Thomas. And when Jesus came to see the disciples after he rose back from the dead, all the disciples saw him, but, G but Thomas did not believe. Do you know what they call him? They call him Doubting Thomas. Because he wouldn't believe that Jesus was alive until he saw them. I hope that you all believe after Easter morning that Jesus is actually alive, do you? Yeah, we do. We believe it's by faith that we believe. And you know, if you look at it, all these people, you ready? All of these people at some time in their life doubted or didn't believe something, correct? Some of them are doing it right now, probably in some part of their life. Yes, even as adults, we doubt. But you know what? When we work together, when we believe in Jesus together, we can do amazing things, okay? So we want to be believers even though we can't see Jesus right here in front of us. Sound good? Can you fold your hands and pray with me? You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Help me to believe in you. Amen. Thank you. You can go back to your seats now. Luke, I was hoping you saw that rainbow on your way up. If not, it would have been a very long children's message, hunting for the rainbow. Well, good morning, everybody. I do have two more quick announcements, and the one is that tonight at 6 o'clock, any parents and youth who are interested in learning about all of the things going on for the summer should be in the worship center because we've got a big list of stuff to hear about. Also, evangelism is meeting tomorrow at 6 o'clock. And there is one more announcement. Allie, will you stand up? This is Allie, and it's her 18th birthday. So, our, yeah, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Allie. Happy birthday to you. I love you, blame your mother. <laughs> I, I got, a, I got a, a little thing, check your phone, check your phone. Are we good? <laughs> you can deal with that later. All right, everybody. In a Peanuts cartoon strip, Charlie Brown is talking to Lucy as they walk home on the last day of school. And Charlie Brown says, Lucy, I got straight A's on my report card. Isn't that great? Lucy, in her typical fashion, shoots down poor Charlie Brown and says, I don't believe you, Charlie Brown. Unless you show me your report card, I cannot believe you. Can you relate? For so many of us, seeing is believing. So let me ask you a few questions. Have you ever felt like you missed something big and everybody else knew about it? Yesterday, while I was at, and this, is, this was really just very interesting, I was at Boscov's, and I guess my husband knows. And, and while I was checking out, I told the lady, I said, I need more clothes for around the church. I'm not doing daycare stuff anymore. I, I can't wear the t-shirts any, you know, all that. And she goes, so you're a pastor. I said, I am. And she said, do you know, you need to get your church start praying for that Dakota. Do you know about him? Isn't that pretty cool? Middle of Boscov's. If you're watching, awesome. Have you ever felt like it's hard to believe in something you can't see or touch or feel? Have you ever felt that something just could not actually happen? And if you did, then you are in good company this morning with Thomas. Thomas was the only one of the disciples who was not in the upper room that day. We don't know why. Maybe he was bold enough to venture out to get food for everybody. Maybe he drew the short straw and ventured out to get food for everybody. All we know is he was in Jerusalem when Jesus appeared. And Thomas willingly chose to come back to his community, to those frightened followers of Jesus hiding in that upper room. When he returns, Thomas is assaulted by testimonies. You know, Easter morning, Mary Magdalene, I have seen the Lord. They didn't believe her. They had to go see for themselves. Thomas doubts. But are you know, do we know what he doubts? Does Thomas doubt the truthfulness of his fellow disciples? Does he doubt their sanity? 
Does Thomas doubt the identity of who the disciples claim to have seen? Does Thomas doubt that Jesus actually died? And does Tom, or does he doubt that he's actually risen? What would you do? How would you feel? Imagine missing one Sunday and coming back here and going, hey, guess who showed up that Sunday? Would you believe it? Thomas gets the title Doubter, even though he's not the only one. Peter, for one, doesn't believe the women. He goes to check. I think Thomas's question rather showed that he was being honest. He didn't want to lie and say that he understood something that he did not understand or that he believed in something he could not believe in. What can we learn from him in this passage? Part of it is that I think God wants us to be honest with ourselves and honest with him. God wants us to ask those questions that we hang on to in our hearts. If you come to Bible study, we ask a lot of questions. Do you trust God this morning? Perhaps you've harbored doubts and questions for years, and you've just had that guilt and felt bad about them. This morning, God is saying, come to me and give me your questions. Give me your doubts like Thomas. So the first thing Thomas experienced suggests that it's normal to struggle with doubt. Thomas was always having to do that. Think about this. When Jesus indicated he was going to go into the territory of his enemies to help his friend Lazarus, Thomas doubted that Jesus would get out alive. Later in the upper room, when Jesus spoke of going to the Father's house, Thomas didn't understand. Following the death of Jesus, Thomas doubted that there was anything left to believe in. In his disillusionment, he chose to go it alone. And when the disciples told him of their experiences, he doubted them. The thing we need to be aware of is that people of faith have often struggled with doubt. This has been true of Gideon from the Bible who led his people to victory, but it started out with the question, if the Lord is with us, why are we having these problems? Jeremiah, who is looked upon as a great prophet, became so discouraged at God's availability that he called God waters that failed. David doubted. Jonah doubted. Even people who we look at as important in our world doubted. We know Martin Luther's words from our song, a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. But he also wrote this. For more than a week, Christ was wholly lost to me. I was shaken by desperation and blasphemy against God. Mother Teresa, now intentionally known as Mother Teresa, that small nun spent part, first part of her life in relative obscurity and comfort. And that all changed when she turned 36 and heard Jesus call to follow him into the slums. Though overjoyed to serve these people, Mother Teresa struggled with dark doubt and feeling estranged from God, and she did suffer. And it's normal to struggle and suffer with doubt. Thomas was honest. How many of us aren't honest about our doubts? We have to acknowledge them, but we just can't stop there. The second thing we can learn from Thomas is that if we're going to deal with doubt, let's put it out in the open. Thomas did that. In each of the events we mentioned, he was not afraid to acknowledge that he was skeptical. He had an honest mind, which sort of said, I can't help it, I have doubts. When the others told him they had met the risen Lord, he no doubt attributed it to their overactive imaginations. And he said, I'll believe it when I can touch it. Paul Tillich, a contemporary theologian, hit upon it. He once said, sometimes I think my mission is to bring faith to the faithless and doubt to the faithful. It was his contention that faith does not thrive when you're too sure of yourself. That a little doubt can help us hold on to our beliefs in humility. And it's when we are in with humility that we become teachable. To be helped, doubt has to be brought out in the open. How many of you have sat by a loved one's side, 
knowing those, their last breath was coming soon, and you doubted. It's a normal reaction. You could say, you don't want people to think badly about you, so I just won't be, I won't say it. I don't want people to think that I'm a doubter. I'm not like that. We all doubt. You know, standing up here today, there are people sitting in this congregation who have doubts in their head. You know, when you gave me my official call in November, I had doubts. Is this the right call for this church? Is this what you need? But we all, I hope, here have strong faith. I have a strong faith, I have a strong family, and I have a strong family at this church. And that's what helps when you have doubts. The third thing we can learn is that Thomas, at its best, having a family of faith helped him deal with the doubts. You know, the other disciples stayed together, but Thomas left. Undoubtedly, he was disillusioned. Others there made mistakes. So think about this. When sorrow comes to us, when sorrow and sadness envelope us, we tend to shut ourselves away and refuse to deal with it. That's been the thing I have been most impressed with. We talked about it at our Bible study. When I watch this young man, Dakota, his mother, Alicia, who puts her faith out there every day and says, I turn you over to God and I'm scared, she's doing exactly what we're talking about doing. Dr. D.T. Niles, a Christian leader in the Church of South India, was a pastor in Sri Lanka. One day he met on the street a member of his parish, whom he had not seen for some time. He asked her where she'd been. She answered that she had been terribly discouraged of late and God seemed far away, so she just couldn't come to worship. His reply to her was, you're going to have times of discouragement, everybody does. There are going to be times when God seems so far away. The trouble is that you have been trying to hold on to God alone. When it's difficult to hold on to God with our own strength, that's the time that we need others to hold on to. And that's what Thomas discovered. He found that when he was by himself, his faith was weak and he missed out. Once he was back in the company of other believers, Christ became real to him again, and his faith took on a new meaning. You know, the only way to survive our doubts is to believe. Believing means to put your complete trust in something or someone. To believe in Jesus means to depend totally on him, 100%. Do you believe in Jesus? Have you put your complete trust in him? No one knows what it is that you need this morning. No one knows what doubts you have, but Jesus does. Just as he knew what Thomas needed so long ago, he knows today what you need, and he's waiting to meet you, just like he did with Thomas. Maybe we need to say these words, I am Thomas. Maybe we're all him in some degree. Thomas has seen the ugliness of the world. He stood at the foot of that cross and watched the crucifixion. He's struggling with his own questions. He experienced shock and loss and grief of his teacher and his friend. Thomas is sitting on that fence between what he's known and his future. That's why I find hope, light, and love in the way Jesus responds. Does he chastise Thomas? He does not. He literally helps Thomas off the fence. According to history, Thomas goes on to help establish the Christian church in India and other locations. Ultimately, Thomas died in the service of Christ. Jesus' goals for Thomas are the same goals he has for each of us, and that's to help us move from doubt to belief. When we acknowledge our doubts and bring them to light, our doubts can become fuel for our faith. When we step over our questions, fears, and anxieties, we have a chance to grow as Christians. So, in Thomas, I find hope. Matthew 28 is a message to all of those in the world who find themselves feeling like Thomas. 
It's just before Jesus gives his disciples the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 17 says, When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And they refer to the 11 disciples minus Judas. Those 11 worshipped Jesus. Some were still sitting on the fence, one foot in the past, one foot in the future. Despite those doubts, Jesus gave them all a mission to go into the world and make the world look more like the kingdom of God. I am Thomas, and maybe you are too. So on this day, all of us who see ourselves as Thomas can know we are loved, that Jesus meets us where we are, and that Jesus still invites us to be a part of that mission to transform his world. And maybe that's just we all need. Amen. Please stand for our next hymn. join together in our Apostles' Creed as it's printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for all the people in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for breathing your spirit and peace upon us. Thank you for giving us your own work of forgiving the sins of all who seek forgiveness and grace. Give us the faith, hope, and charity to believe, worship, and obey you always. May we as a church never doubt your resurrection and always proclaim you as the crucified and risen Savior of our world. Lord, in your mercy. Your Breathe your gracious spirit upon this congregation. Make us hunger for your word and thirst for your goodness. Help us to love you by serving others in your name. Breathe your spirit upon doubters and all those whose confidence in your grace has been shaken by tragedy. Use us to lead them into your house. Lift them with your wounded hands. Transform their unbelief into unshakable faith in you, their Lord and God. Lord, in your mercy. Give the leaders of this nation and to all people that peace which the world cannot give. Let righteousness and mercy bless those troubled by the powers of sin, evil, and death. Pray for those who are serving in places of war to bring peace to others. We lift up all of those who serve in our military and in our emergency services. Keep them safe and bring them home. Lord, in your mercy. The other disciples sought out Thomas when he was doubting and sorrowful. Teach us to seek out and walk with others when they are in despair. Give us grace to be gentle, patient, as we invite them to taste and see your goodness. We ask you to bring, pre bring peace and healing to all who are in need of your healing touch, especially those who are listed in our prayer ministry bulletin. Give their doctors, their nurses, the wisdom to care for them. Give each person patience to wait for your will to be done. Today, we especially lift up Bill and Nancy, who are both at home, and we just pray for, for their coming back to a better quality of health. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you have been raised from the dead. You promised your resurrection life to all who have been redeemed. We tr and trust into your care anyone who has recently passed away. Wipe away the tears of all who grieve. Turn our doubt into confidence. Grant that all whom you have redeemed may see you face to face and cry out as Thomas did, my Lord and my God, Lord in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this congregation, for the many, many people who serve so selflessly. We lift up Andy Stump and we just pray for his continued safety in Haiti. We thank you for the mission that he continues to do over there. We thank you for the blessings of friends and family. Blessings that we can love and support each other through our doubts and any situations we face. Give us strength and courage to continue to love each other as you have loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. We'll take a minute to share the peace with those around you. And as we come back to our seats, we'll continue with our communion service. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God, but chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, 
and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread and broke it and gave it to all his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and blessed it and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Please join together in the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated and all are invited to join us at our communion table.
stand if you're able. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join together in our mission statement. Our mission is strengthening individuals and families as we experience together the promise and power of God's love. And as you leave here this morning, may the one who loves you most of all, Jesus, our Savior, go with you. May he walk ahead of you to guide you. May he walk behind you to encourage you. May he walk beside you as your very, very best friend. May he be above you to watch over you and to care for you. And may he be in your heart to fill it with love, peace, and uncontainable joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.